and it's basically only relevant when you have unequal sample sizes. Tukey's HSD, a lot of people don't know this, actually assumes equal sample size. In fact, we can check Kirk again, who says, uh, the procedure has another limitation. It requires equal sample ends. If sample ends are not equal, the Tukey-Kramer procedure can be used. And what SPSS is doing here is Tukey's HSD, and it's actually giving me the same results as above, uh, because really what SPSS should be calling this is Tukey Kramer HSD. This is actually the Tukey Kramer results for unequal sample sizes. But in this case, because sample sizes are equal to 25 across all groups, you actually get all the same p-values. It's not a great way to display results, but that's the way SPSS does it. And we can see that the comparison for low expectation versus average expectation is 0 0.082, the p-value associated with that, which is also what you get up here in Tukey's HSD. So what SPSS should call this as Tukey's HSD, and it should call this Tukey's Tukey Kramer HSD, which can cope with unequal sample sizes. And I'll show you a case with unequal sample sizes. So in this case here, I've trimmed two people off the very high, uh, the high expectation group. So it's almost equal sample size, but slightly off. So compare means one-way ANOVA, group in there, post hoc, two key. Uh, I'd click on descriptors too, but I just want to do this quickly so we can look at the post hoc tests. And we can see in this case here, uh, so here's the ANOVA, basically the same but I've trimmed sample size. You can see the ends here are 25, 25, 25, and 23. And SPSS is using a harmonic mean, which is what the Tukey Kramer procedure does. And we can see that the comparison between, for example, low expectation and average expectation has a p-value of 0 0.087. But in this table here for Tukey HSD, low expectation versus average expectation was 0 0.082 which is different than 0 0.087. And technically, the 0 0.087 is the more accurate because the sample sizes are not equal in this unequal sample size case. So if you have four means or more that you're comparing and you have unequal sample sizes, you should be technically using Tukey Kramer HSD in the bottom here, which basically just groups homogeneous uh, means. So any comparison that's not in this table is statistically significant from each other. So very low expectation versus high expectation, it hasn't lumped it into any of the columns. And that's because it's sig statistically significant. Low expect very low expectation versus high expectation is p less than 0 0.05. So it basically presents the non-significant comparisons for you in this table. And the p-values are slightly different than what you find here, because this is the Tukey-Kramer procedure, which copes with unequal sample sizes. And this one isn't. Again, uh, Possibly a lot of people are not aware of this. So you should be using that one in four means or more. Now, if you have three means and unequal sample sizes, you can still use Fisher's LSD, because Fisher's LSD can actually cope with unequal sample sizes. Now, the last thing I want to show you is effect size. Now, with comparing two means, you'd want to calculate something like Cohen's D. But when you do an ANOVA, the effect size estimate you should be calculating is eta squared. And I'll do it with the three means because in the Tukey procedure, you would just go straight into the means and not even look at the ANOVA. But in the two-step procedure with the Fisher's LSD, you'd want to do the ANOVA plus the Fisher's LSD values. Now to get, when you do the one-way ANOVA in this case, you even if you click on, e you don't get an option to click on effect size. So options, it just doesn't give you anything for effect size. And what I want is eta squared. And you'd always report that when you do a between groups ANOVA. Even if you do two key, like I said, most people would just report the ANOVA anyway, even though they shouldn't. So go into analyze, compare means, and general linear model. If you want SPSS to calculate eta squared for you, you need to go into general linear model, univariate, 
and put student achievement in a dependent variable and teacher group 